Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. And in today's ZBrush Cowboy video, we are gonna show you <laughs> how to exclusively stay in ZBrush and make uh, a gun barrel, I guess? Yeah, yeah, ZBrush Cowboy style. So we're not gonna be talking about any sort of topology. We're gonna do it only with Booleans and a ray mesh and uh, basically neglecting any sort of thing that's called a um, good pipeline. So if you're a ZBrush Cowboy like us, this is the tutorial for you. So you know what we've been spending a year on talking about how you should always have to good topology. <laughs> We're gonna throw all of that out. So we just wanted to make something cool, basically. Yeah. So, ZBrush is so powerful for these kind of things. Yeah. And this is just a primitive that I loaded up from just the comma key, the spotlight, is it quick spotlight, whatever it's called. Uh, primitive here, you can achieve the same result with Z Modeler or any standard pipe primitive from you know, blender or something. And, uh, or you could just do a Boolean where you make a cylinder in a cylinder and subtract them. So, but for this tutorial, this is gonna work just fine. So the first thing I wanna do is append a cube. And this is gonna have that nice seabrush topology <laughs> on there. So I'm just gonna rotate that over there because we want the gun barrel. So I'm just gonna be using these these primitives there. How do you rotate so that it snaps? Oh, you just hold down shift and then on any axis and then you can see down here there's a number and then it just, uh, it just snaps to your rotation. Nice little tip. Yep. And another tip is if you hold down control and alt while dragging on any of these scale gizmos, it constrains to two uh, axes. So this way I can just scale it down like this, get a small one, maybe scale it out a little more, maybe a little smaller. The gizmo, is, it takes a bit of time to get into, but once you enter into it, it's actually really powerful. Yeah, I still go back and forth between the 3D gizmo and the transpose lines, yeah. just because they have different use cases. Like the other day I learned that there's a soft select modifier in the transpose line, and I've been using Seabrush for, I don't know, 10 plus years now, and yeah. Quick tip video for you guys in the future. <laughs> uh, one thing as well to mention is that when you're dealing with hard surface, you really want to make your own interface. Yeah. That it's, it's messy stuff is literally all over the place. So this UI is still a, a work in progress, but it's, I mean, you can see it's like, it's messy, but I've tried to like divide it into a group. So there's a little divider between. So everything kind of makes sense for what I needed to. Uh, like I said, it's still work in progress. So this is gonna evolve over time, but definitely make a custom UI because this is a nightmare without it. Yeah, and once the custom UI is done, maybe we can even share it. Oh, yes. So first things first is we're gonna be using a ray mesh for this. What you could do is you could position one of these and duplicate it around, but that's that's not what a ZBrush Cowboy does. So <laughs> no, a ZBrush no. Cowboy <laughs> uses a ray mesh. So let's activate a ray mesh. So if you think about it, imagine a gun barrel. <laughs> just imagine a reference of a gun barrel. Uh, Cause I don't actually have a reference right now. So I'm just imagining it. So, you know, we have the, the barrel is sort of like straight like this and then we have them going across. So we want a twist of multiple of these around the inner cylinder. So it's super easy to do this with a ray mesh actually. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll just set like, set it to repeat something like 16 times. It could be whatever number you want. And then I find the gizmo is very helpful to figure out what's the axis I wanna, I wanna move stuff in. So this is gonna be green, so that's gonna be the Y axis. So I'm gonna rotate around here that was totally wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just gonna say that, that I have a little confession is that I, I still, I've been doing 3D for like almost half my life now and I still get the axes wrong. So I'd just like to point out that uh, when you rotate an object, the gizmo <laughs> inherits that transform. <laughs> so if you hold down, <laughs> you hold down alt and click this little arrow or little circle here, uh, it, re it resets back to the unmasked or reset mesh orientation. So it was it was Seabrush that tricked me into thinking it was the Y axis when you know because I'm just shifting blame I don't want to take the blame for this like a good responsible <laughs> artist I I just take responsibility knowing that I just I just screw this up constantly <laughs> so I'm gonna rotate it I'm gonna rotate it 360 degrees because that's a circle um, yeah so there's also some math, math advice in this for you and the next thing is gonna be how do we get this positioned out around here so. What you could do is you could like offset it and you could maybe like move the pivot, but then we run into this issue where it sort of fans out from the center. Yeah. Where what we want to do is we want to move the sort of collective, we want the pivot to stay in the center, but move all the objects out from the center. So one way of doing this, which is the fastest way I think is say lock position. And then this way you can now move your source object and you just move it out. 
And so we get a preview of, okay, where, where is it going to be? The nice thing about array mesh is that we're not committed to any of this. So we could always change it afterwards if we want to like have a weird sort of twist in it or something. Uh, it's pretty cool. What's important here is that it actually intersects with the main object because yeah. we were going to use a Boolean and, and just remove it. So let's see here. I want to just scale these down just a little bit more. So again, because everything's a ray mesh, these are just instances. They aren't actual geometry right now. So whenever I edit this, I'm just gonna hold down Control and Alt and scale this a little bit again, just to get more space in there. So let's see, what I wanna do is I wanna take these boxes and I wanna cut into this mesh. You could also add it on top, but it's really up to you. So something like this, where it intersects about halfway through. There we go. And the next step is going to be the rifling, or that, or the sort of twist on the rifling of the barrel. And that we can do under deformation with the twist modifier. So let's just try this out right now. Hey, we happen to be on the right axis. But if you're not, let's <laughs> <was> say, lucky. <laughs> usually you, you'll probably have things pointing upwards like this. So let's pretend that's what you did. You might have an axis that looks like this. And you're like, oh shit, can't use this feature anymore. Uh, you just have to figure out again with the gizmo when the gizmo is not tricking you into you know, thinking of which way is it rotated. Uh, just look here, okay, it's the Z axis. So we just twist on Z, Let's see, something like that. Like, I don't know the scientifics behind, scientifics, isn't that even a word? Who knows? The science? <laughs> no, it is the scientifics behind. <laughs> the scientifics behind uh, how much twisting you need in, in the rifling of a barrel, but you can just experiment with that. And the cool thing is this being a ray mesh and we're gonna be working with booleans, we can do this on the fly. So in order to work with this, if you've never used booleans before, uh, you can see in my UI here, I have live booleans here and I have make boolean mesh here. Now, live boolean is, um, how do you say this? A silly feature, I think, because <laughs> it lives under rendering because it's just a preview. So it's not a, th it's not an actual. It's just a, it's just a viewport preview. So it lives under rendering. So enable live booleans and nothing happens. So all we have to do is set our rifling to subtract, and now it's getting subtracted from our mesh. Ta-da! And that looks pretty dope. And then you know you could always go in, and like move these more if you wanted to, just have a tiny bit of rifling, something like that. Let's do this. This is where it gets really powerful because you can work in a non-destructive manner. Yeah. I also think that having live bullions under render is the most seabrush thing I've ever heard <laughs> yeah. in my life. It's pretty, it's pretty seabrush. <laughs> where does it not belong? <laughs> <laughs> but then you have something like this and you can see sometimes you, there are some render artifacts like here. That's purely because it's a preview. It's not an actual mesh. So what you can do is let's say you, you're happy with this and you want to go ahead and integrate this into your pipeline that doesn't care about subdivisions or <laughs> anything. Uh, <laughs> pipeline. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit silly. So under subtool, go to Boolean, make Boolean mesh. And then here we go. Now we have a perfect Boolean. <laughs> The nice topology and everything. This is a, a good example for use case of this. Would obviously, you know, not talking like heavy production, but maybe you know, if you if you work in a game asset and you need a high poly version, or if you're working purely for concepting, yeah, where you you literally don't care about the the topology. And in a lot of cases, caring about topology is is stupid. Like the end result for a lot of things is is the shape. So. Uh, yeah, to, to proper proper topology is important in a production, yeah. but uh, for for a lot of work use cases, it's it's not at all. No, just as a quick uh, bonus note, I guess uh, if you hit D, you can turn on uh, dynamic subdivision, which I just did here. And the cool thing about dynamic subdivision and booleans is that any object that is below the sort of source object or the target object, I suppose, inherit the inherit the subdivision, the dynamic subdivision. But in order to have that propagate onto when you make the mesh, you have to turn on the D, DS div, like dynamic subdiv under booleans. And then just make another boolean mesh. And then there you go. Now you have this subdivided version with your booleans on and it's actually pretty clean now. Yeah, so. just from, it's pretty impressive. I mean, if you try to actually 
use this in a subdivision later on, it's it's going to probably break. But just from looking at it, the result is pretty damn solid. Yeah. So this is uh, this is one way, I guess, of making rifling in a barrel in ZBrush the most ZBrush cowboy way you can. Yeah, we tried to find the most ZBrush cowboy <laughs> way possible. <laughs> yeah. I have like 10 other ways, which is faster in Maya or Blender or whatever, but it's a good way. Yeah. So uh, let, let, let us know if you want to see more of these sort of like quick tips in ZBrush or if it's uh, Blender or uh, Substance Painter, if it's Maya, whatever it is. Uh, we'd be happy to make more of these tutorials for you. So uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks, guys. And remember to turn on notifications because YouTube is being silly. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> like, comment and subscribe and all that as well. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, guys.